What is mirror magic? Well, I'm the witch who literally wrote the book on that. There are so many different kinds of mirror magic, divination, reversal spells, duplication, mirror traps, but one of my favorite kinds of mirror magic is a magical shield known as a Hexenspiegel. It's not hard to do, and you can enchant one to protect your energy in these challenging times. I'll show you how to enchant a small mirror, transforming it into an amulet that can be used for personal or home protection. I'm really excited to share this with you. And make sure you stick around until the end, and I'll show you how to craft one of the Hexenspiegel necklaces that I make. Coming up next. Welcome to the Witch's Studio. I am, of course, Mickey Mueller, author, illustrator, and witch. Not necessarily in that order. And we have so many new people here. I've been getting requests from many of you about protection magic. Both you dears who have been with me for a while and the new folks who've recently joined us. When an Instagram reel and TikTok of the lemon and salt on crossing really took off over there. And yeah, we're all looking for lots of protection spells these days. I have a great one for you today. I'm going to show you how to make a special witch's mirror known as a Hexenspiegel. I'm planning to share more mirror magic spells and protection spells too. So if you haven't already, take a second to hit the subscribe button so that you'll have these resources available to you as soon as I post them. Hexenspiegel. Sounds kind of badass. And it is. It literally means witch's mirror in German. It's a specific kind of mirror. It's a mirrored pendant or pin or jewelry that's worn or carried or displayed in your home. And it's meant to shield you from the evil eye and all kinds of negative energy. It's generally a preventative that you can put in place to keep out intrusive, harmful magic and hateful intentions. The Hexenspiegel not only repels harm, but sends negative energy that you had sent to you right back to the attacker. So this tiny mirror has some very serious magic. The Hexenspiegel does set off warning bells to energetic attackers. Okay, not literal bells. Basically, they'll get the feeling that they, they're better off just to leave you alone to begin with, or be on their best behavior around you. This is something that they'll only notice on a subconscious level. But if they don't heed the warning and they go ahead and send the malicious intentions your way, the Hexenspiegel simply says, thanks but no thanks, letting all the ill intentions remain with the owner. They keep their own nasty gift. It doesn't multiply the energy or add to it it just keeps it from getting through to you, so it remains with the sender. The Hexenspiegel is a kind of automatic kind of magic. You place it, forget it, and it keeps on doing its job without any further attention from you. There are a few online sellers that sell pre-enchanted Hexenspiegels, but this spell allows you to turn any mirror into a Hexenspiegel. I sometimes make a batch for my Etsy shop, and I'll show you how I make my Hexenspiegel necklaces at the end of this video. If you're watching this video right after it came out, I might still have a few of these in my shop. I'll leave the link below if you want one of mine, but they're really fun to make yourself. Mirrored pendants and pins became popular in Victorian times. Women sometimes wore mirrors in their hat pins. They were designed to be cosmetic, but could be easily enchanted as well. As an interesting side note, women sometimes resorted to hat pins for physical protection too. And much like the Hexenspiegel energy, some potential attackers would avoid women that had an obvious hat pin in her hat because they knew she was armed. So it was both a deterrent and a weapon. I'm wearing my Bride of Frankenstein shirt today because not only is she using a small compact mirror, but Elsa Lanchester, who starred as both Mary Shelley and the Bride in the original 1935 movie, also wrote and performed a song about the Victorian ladies and their hat pin weapons. Seriously, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, I digress. 
But if you're interested, you can hear the song here. You can find both actual antiques and reproductions of fancy decorative mirror pins and pendants in many styles at pretty much every price point. Try checking your local secondhand store. I know lots of people worry about secondhand mirrors, but we're witches with skills. Brew up some tea out of clearing and cleansing herbs. I like chamomile, peppermint, rosemary, sage, fennel, lavender, and bay. Strain it well and then add that infusion to some white vinegar, about half and half. Now you have a magical mirror purifier that you can use with your intention to reset any mirror's energy and clear out anything left over from the previous owner. You can also cleanse the mirror with purifying smoke of your choice. Try frankincense, sandalwood, bay, or sage. And if it's small enough, you can bury it in salt for a couple of days. If you can't find mirror jewelry locally, just try a quick internet search. There are many out there. Some mirror pendants are even have a locket inside or they're under a sliding cover. And yes, the Hexenspiegel magic still works if the mirror is covered. There are even small mirrors that are meant to be kept in wallets. Some of those are acrylic mirrors so they don't get broken. And yes, they still work too. Some people like to enchant a hex and spiegel for their home, protecting not only themselves, but their family, property, and even a business from harm. It can be a fancy sun catcher that's on display or a simple small mirror craft tile that's hidden in the corner of a window facing out. Be creative, you never know what you might find. You can also find small mirror jewelry components at your local craft store. So you can make necklaces, earrings, sun catchers, even a charm bracelet in your own style, and even include stones for magical protection to boost your hex and spiegel, such as moonstone, tiger eye, black tourmaline, or labradorite. You could add special charms, such as an animal that you like to work with, a personal sigil, or a symbol of a deity that you like to work with to make it even more personal. I have two versions of the Hex and Spiegel spell. One is in my book, The Witch's Mirror. A simpler version is in the download of my Witch's Mirror Book of Shadows pages that I have in my Etsy shop, which has a lot of additional mirror spells that I came up with after I wrote my book. I'll leave the links for both in the description below. The one I'm showing you today is a combination of both of these spells. You see, you don't have to do things exactly as they're written in a book or exactly the same way that you did it the last time. As long as you have a good valid reason for your methods and they make sense to you personally, it will work. We're going to grab my copy of The Witch's Mirror and double check the formula for the Hex and Spiegel wash. The herbs are rosemary, marjoram, holly leaves or berries, rowan, any part of the rowan, mullein, nettle, and agrimony. It's okay if you don't have all of these, just use the ones that you have on hand. And if you need to substitute with protective herbs that you have on hand, that's okay too. So we're making an infusion. I add the herbs to a tea ball, pop it into a teacup, and then just pour in some hot water. Just let that steep until, basically until it cools off enough that you can handle it. Now that it is cool, I have taken a coffee filter and I have fastened it using clothespins to a glass that I just happen to have sitting there on the shelf and I'm going to pour this through the filter. The reason is the tea ball is not going to filter all of that plant material out and this will allow you to get a nice clear infusion that you can use in a spray bottle without worry that the herbs are going to clog anything up. Next I fill a little spray bottle halfway up with the infusion and then fill it up the rest of the way with some white vinegar that's half infusion half white vinegar next I light a white candle and I'm also lighting some incense use any incense of your choice that's good for clearing and cleansing I'm using sandalwood I mentioned some others earlier in this video mirrors can be good at absorbing energy so I'm using that incense 
to clear out the mirror so we're basically starting with a purified mirror you can also use the mirror purifier that i talked about earlier in this video i just thought i would show you another way that you can do it once we finish the spell this mirror will no longer be a mirror that absorbs energy but a mirror that repels it that is the hexenspiegel wash that we just created and i'm using it to wash the mirror and the whole necklace this has a double duty of cleaning the mirror also leaving the residue of the protective herbs behind that will help me to program this mirror. Next, I hold the Hexenspiegel in my left hand and with my right hand, I trace a pentagram in the air over it and push it in with my right hand. Now whisper into your cupped hands the following incantation three times. Hexenspiegel, now I name you. My protector, now I claim you. Serve this witch as my noble guard from all attacks, their access barred. Decline and keep curses at bay, all nasty arrows shine away. You can also use the incantation that I have in the book, The Witch's Mirror, which is slightly different than this one. The incantation that I just used will be in the description below where you can grab it. Leave it next to the candle until the candle burns down completely. You can bury any remaining wax on your property or simply state that the spell is complete and throw it away. Now you can enchant your own witch's mirror for magical protection. It's not a difficult spell and it really packs a magical punch. I recently charged a bunch of one inch mirrors and jewelry parts under the full super moon on July 13th and I made them into hex and spiegels. I'll show you how I did it and you can make one if you want to. What I'm showing you here is the prototype that I was testing since I created a new back design with a snake on it. So you'll see me purifying and enchanting the individual mirror. I did it a little differently when I did the full moon batch, but you'll probably be making one just for yourself. So I wanted to show you how to do that. I've got my mirrors, my Hexenspiegel herbs, eye pins, grabbing a little drink before I get started. And because it's hot, I made a butterfly pea flower lemonade. You know, when I'm magical crafting, I also like to light some incense and a candle. Of course, you don't have to do that. That's just part of my process. Much of the magic that we used in the Hexenspiegel spell, I actually include during the creating of these Hexenspiegels. So the magic is actually part of it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purify that mirror the same way we did in the Hexenspiegel spell. I'm using my incense stick to do that. This is an important step. The ones that I did for the full moon, I actually purified all of them before I enchanted them under the full moon. I also whipped up a batch of mirror purifying wash and I'm showing you how to do that. You don't have to do both. You can do one or the other. I just thought I'd show you how to do both of those things. Mirrors can absorb energy. Once once we're finished with this, it will be a repelling mirror, not an absorbing mirror, but it's important to purify it before we get started because of that. Now again, I have a lot more information about witches' mirrors in my book, The Witch's Mirror, but I also have the instructions for making these Hexenspiegels in this book. And that is the instructions that I'm using to show you. I'm using the herbs that we used to make the Hexenspiegel wash. You don't want to add oil or mirror wash to clay. So we're just going to use these dry herbs and mix it in with the clay. Today I was also drawn to add some Nag Champa powder. When I get guidance to do something like that, I just add it. Again, don't feel like you have to do it exactly the way I do it. You can change things too and alter them as you go. You'll also need polymer clay. I often use Sculpey, but Fimo is another brand that will work just fine. This is actually the Michaels brand. It's just a great little clay and very affordable. You only need a small amount, but since I'm mixing up the clay for a bunch of of hex and spiegels later i'm just going to go ahead and use a much bigger piece and then i'll break off a small piece for the one that we're making today you have to knead this clay in order to soften it that's what i'm doing here just squoosh it and stretch it until it gets nice and soft and easy to work with then i kind of form it into a dish shape and i pour my herbs into it and then i just work that clay until the herbs are all incorporated and basically a matrix of herbs exists within the clay that i'm actually going to use to form the hexenspiegel 
While you're doing this, you should be focusing on protection energy and you can even use the incantation that I taught you in the spell to charge the clay as you work. Now I break off a little piece of clay. I guess that's about the size of a hazelnut. Now I'm grabbing one of those eye pins. That's just a long piece of wire that has a loop on the end. And I'm grabbing my little hemostats. I use these a lot for jewelry making. They're nice because they can clamp shut and hold in place, but you can use needle nose pliers just as easily. I'm clamping the tip that doesn't have the loop in it, and I'm just twisting it all the way around, as you can see here. This is how we're gonna make the bail, which is the part of the jewelry that the uh, necklace would hang on. And then I just kind of unwinded it, and and turned it into a little flat spiral with a loop that sticks up as you can see there that's kind of the shape that you want it to be I have found that this shape works better when working with polymer clay than if you just cut it short because that spiral shape will help to hold the loop in place when you press the clay around it whereas if you just cut it off it has a tendency to pull out of the clay I hand sculpted a back design but you don't have to have those kinds of skills you can literally just just use a piece of jewelry to make a nice back design and I'll show you how to do it here that's all there is to it ta-da easy and I have a little tip that helps whatever you're pressing into the clay to not stick and this is a magical ingredient that is a magical powder it's very mystical it's it's cornstarch but this works great so i use a little dry brush and i am brushing it onto the hand sculpted stamp that i made now this is a stamp that i made out of the same kind of clay i baked it so that it's hard and this way i can reproduce the design over and over so that they all have the same design then i sandwich the little spiral of wire in between the mirror and the clay and I flatten the clay to form a disc on the back of the mirror that's about the same size as the mirror. Now I'm going to press my handcrafted stamp design onto the back of that clay and just push it down so that it forms the snake design that I created for this batch of Hex and Spiegels. And there it is. As you can see, it really turned out pretty cool. I use a dry brush to dust away any of the extra uh, cornstarch. And as you can see, it turned out pretty cool. Now I am forming the rest of the clay around the edges of that mirror to make sure that the whole edge of the mirror is covered and a lot of it kind of lumps over the top of the mirror. Now I'm going to use a craft knife to gently slice away the extra so that it's flush with the front of the mirror and I know all the sides are covered. At this point, I like to set it aside somewhere cool, maybe where the air conditioner is blowing on it because the cooler that little disc uh, design is, the less likely it'll be to get mushed when I do the next step. So I'm creating a coil out of some of the polymer clay. This is how you can do it by hand quite simply. It's not hard. I have a little tool, an extruder that I use because I make so many of these at a time and it just speeds the process up quite a bit. But you can easily do it by hand as I just showed you. Now I'm gonna fasten one end of the clay at the top there and coil it just around the face of the edge of the mirror. This is creating a frame and just gently pressing it as I go. I'm trying to hold the uh, rest of the mirror carefully so as not to smash the back side. That's kind of the tricky part. Then I break that off a little bit and I create a little coil and that's how I like to end mine with a little coil there up at the top. It just adds some interest and makes it kind of pretty. I keep pressing it down. And now I have a little tool there that I'm gonna use to kind of make sure that it's nice and pressed down and round. I kind of use it to just nudge that into a nice circular shape on the inside, make sure that I don't have any weird 
little edges or anything. So there's the back, still looking good because I didn't mash it. And there is the front. Now to me, that still needs a little texture. So I'm gonna grab this ink pen and take the lid off and I'm gonna use that little round part right there. And I'm just gonna put little crescents all around the outside of it, just to add some texture to it because when I go to paint it, it's much nicer if there's some texture because of the way that I paint it. Also, it just looked kind of plain before, and I really like the look of this. I probably should have dipped that into the cornstarch as well. I totally forgot to do that. But as you can see, it's not sticking too badly. You can use anything that you have on hand. You can make different patterns depending on what you have. Maybe you have a ring with an interesting design that you want to use or something like that. And now I'm gonna decorate that little coil with just some simple slash marks. And I'm using a sculpting tool, but you know what, for years I didn't have these and I just used a pencil or a toothpick, whatever I had on hand. So don't feel like you have to have these special tools in order to do this. And I'm really happy with the look of that. I still need to clean up those edges a little bit because sometimes decorating that little edge will cause it to kind of skew out of shape. So you've got to reshape it a little bit and make sure it's nice and round. There it is. I think it turned out really nice. One of the things that I love about polymer clay is that you can fire these in your oven. I bake it at 270 degrees Fahrenheit or 135 degrees Celsius, 15 minutes per half inch. Double check your package of clay because your instructions might be different than what I have on this pack. I often use silver paint for these black Hexenspiegels, but I found this really cool dragon shimmer paint and I experimented with it on a piece of hardened black clay and I love the look of this. It's got kind of a, uh, almost looks like Labradorite in the light. It's really pretty. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using a really light brush. I've barely coated it with any paint and then brushed, kind of dry brushed, uh, it onto a surface that you can't really see off to the side there to make sure that there's just a little bit of paint on that brush. It's not highly saturated. That allows the paint to just touch the surface of the clay and leaves all the cracks and crevices black. And it just makes the design really pop. As you can see, once you put the paint on it, you can really see that little snake. And when you see these in person, you can see the little scales and everything. It looks really cool. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Now that it's crafted, I will clean that with the Hexenspiegel wash so that it's clean from fingerprints and I'll go ahead and charge it on my altar. Now you have some portable mirror magic that you can travel with anytime you want. I think that you'll love working with these powerful protective charms. I do have the link for the rest of the full super moon ones that I made on July 2022. They're down below if they're still available, but when they're gone, they're gone. There are so many ways to work with mirrors magically. I hope that this inspires you to try this beautiful mirror spell. Have you ever worked with mirrors in your witchcraft? Let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know if you want some more in-depth information about working with mirrors. I would be happy to do some more mirror spells for you here. Don't forget to share this video with your witchy friends. They would probably be grateful for another protection spell. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and cast a spell on the notification bell so that you'll magically know as soon as I upload a new video. Thanks again for joining me here in my magical studio. I have a few more videos here that I think that you might enjoy. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, happy, and healthy. And remember, as always, to be your magic.